All right, we're back with the Final Percent podcast, and uh, I feel it important to just kind of go back. I, it was four days ago, five days ago when I started this everyday thing, and uh, the whole thing was on this unprecedented time, and I think that it's important to revisit that because I'm starting to think no one actually understands what unprecedented means. That means a precedent has not been set. We are in un charted territory. These are new waters. And we have to understand that if we behave terribly or we do the fear-mongering thing, then that is going to be the precedent. And then that means that if and probably when this happens again, we're going to take worse measures because anybody in authority are going to be scared. There's, There's no instruction manual for life. And I think that we are so quick to judge how companies are behaving, which I'm not saying everyone's doing great, but I am saying that everybody is trying. They really are. Whether you're a Democrat or a Republican, they they are trying. And the fact that we live in this kind of we're playing the blame game way too much we need to come together and that's why i i want to if there's this mystical instruction manual manual and user manual for the game of life user manual for humanity i would like to see it because we are so quick to say that governors are not doing what they should um, the, the government is not doing what it should. We are so quick to say that schools are not doing what they should. They, they're either doing too much or too little. Everyone is doing too much or too little. And every, have, have you ever heard of the idea of the armchair quarterback? That's, that's the person who's watching Tom Brady and they're getting mad because he threw a pick when they have no idea what it's like to have just been hit multiple times at one hit after another after another of these 250 300 pound linebackers coming literally trying to destroy you you know what sometimes you're going to throw a pick it is what it is and just to be super clear i'm not playing on either side of the government this is not a political thing this is a we have to first and foremost take care of ourselves and then we have to take care of our family And then we have to reach out and be a beacon of hope for positivity for our communities. But spreading all of this judgment of they should have done this. I should have done this. This should have happened. You know what? In some respects, you're probably right. But when you first heard about the coronavirus, did you take it seriously? When you first heard about what was happening, did you, how many people out there who are now tr- kind of getting a little bit more antsy from maybe too much social distancing, and they're getting antsy, they're getting angsty, they're on online, and because you're not going to be face to face, you're a little bit more aggressive than you should or need to be. You know what? Just take a second. And I know that we already talked about this and try to understand their point of view. And if you're not willing to understand their point of view, what makes you think that they're going to try to understand your point of view? It's just, it's fascinating to watch this happen because everybody, here's the answer. Every single person on planet earth could have done better. That's just the truth. It's like Brad Lee is famous for saying, all you actually have to do in life to grow a, a massive business and have success beyond your wildest dreams is every single day, do more and get better. You know what? We could have been better and we could have done more. Every single human being on planet Earth wishes they would have approached this a little differently. If you are in the investment market, the stock market, if you are in education, 
if you are in government, if you're in international trade, if you're in the automobile industry, it doesn't matter what industry you are in, you wished you would have seen what was coming. And you know what? We're probably not at the end yet. But at the local level, on the very uh, you know, intimate level, if you will, when I talk to people, it's, it's amazing what people do versus what person does. Does that make sense? So individually, people are actually much more rational. And from a people stand, this mass hysteria thing that's going on, I just, I find it so fascinating because it's almost like we kind of want things to get worse. And is that what we need? I, I have to say no. I have to say, you know what? It's already pretty scary. It's already pretty dang bad. We have states on lockdown you know what, why, why, why don't every single state go on lockdown? Well, there's probably some very valid concerns. Why do you still let your kid out to play? Why aren't you social distancing from your husband? Why do you still go do quick grocery runs? Why don't you order all of your food in? Everyone can change the narrative, but the thing is, is we are just doing the best we can as humanity, and I believe that. I I'm still sticking with the fact that I think we are going to learn from this and we are going to become more so that we can do more and we will have more. But sometimes what we need to have is a better understanding of our past and our present so that we can accurately put, predict the future, if that makes sense. So right now, the precedent that we are setting is, and, and right now, I have to say that the media, right and left, the media is exacerbating the issue so much on so many levels. We've got one hand saying that it's far worse than it is uh, from my perspective, and then another hand saying that it's not, it's not as bad as it is. And it's like I say in entrepreneurship, you know what? There, there's optimism and there's realism and good entrepreneurship is somewhere in the middle, you know? And so I don't subscribe to the, we're a couple steps away from the zombie apocalypse. I also don't subscribe to the fact that we're dealing with the flu or something that is just like the flu because, you know, the flu doesn't shut down world economies, you know? Yes, I understand that 1%, 2%, 3% of the world population is millions and millions of people, so we're trying to protect them. For whatever reason, I do personally think that this feels a little bit different, and I think that we um, are exacerbating the issue and we're making it harder to control and contain. Um, but I would like to control and contain negativity. Um, I would like to control and con I, I want to give people hope. Hope is, is really important right now. And remember, hope and faith go hand in hand. Hope is something that gets you started and you hope that it works out. Faith is something that after you see a few things, you have faith that it is going to work out. Right now, people are struggling to just get to hope. I hope that this is going to be okay. I hope that I still have a business. I hope that I can find a job. I hope that I can feed my kids. We haven't moved into the faith part yet to where I have faith that we're being led appropriately. But right now, we are getting pulled in so many directions that it is hard to believe any one of them. And, and again, I don't care what side of the proverbial aisle that you subscribe to. We need bipartisanship, not just on Capitol Hill. We need bipartisanship in the streets. That means that all of your, your Republican friends or all of your Democrat friends, you guys can hang out and talk and love each other. And if you know what, you don't want to understand and take the time to try to understand their point of view, just shut up. Just shut up and don't talk about stuff like that. Does anyone remember when their mom early on in their life would say, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all? Now, I'm not, I'm not saying don't give me facts because if the facts suck, then you know what? Let me know as fast as possible. I'm down. Let's go. I need to be prepared. 
I don't want to panic. I want to prepare. And to be able to properly prepare, man, that's a lot of P words. To, to be able to properly prepare, I need the accurate information, not inflated information to sell news stories or deflated information so that I can get a source of comfort. Comfort. I don't, I just want the truth. Just, you know what? Break it down for me. Let's go. Let's roll. I'm ready to go. But I don't feel like I'm getting it from anything that is a, a media outlet. I, I had my dad uh, yesterday try to show me something on Facebook, and I just, I literally was so just, I didn't want to read anything on Facebook. I, I mean, I get enough notifications on my phone and people sending me things, and I just don't. I don't want to read any more negativity or opinions. I just want facts. And if I can't have a fact, I don't want it. Because the fact is, I remain hopeful and faithful, and I remain positive in this crisis. And that's who I am. That's what I'm going to stay doing. But it's hard to do with, with the negativity bullets. And what I mean by that is a lot of times you feel like you're being drowned and you feel like you're getting shoved underground and every time your head comes up, you're just getting punched in the face with negativity bullets. Sooner or later, it kills your spirit. Don't let it kill your spirit. Say enough is enough. Say enough is enough. The news needs to start being news. And I'm not trying to make this all about the, the, the media. It's also our reaction. And then if they drop a story that goes viral, that this, that, and the other, and all these things happen, well, they're going to drop another one like that. Why? Because more eyeballs means more dollars for them. They're not in the news business. They're in the advertising business. We need to start understanding that. So anyway, guys... Be positive. Use your own brain. Come to your own conclusions and go back to what mom said. If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say it. That's it. Just shut up. Because no one needs more negativity. Trust me, everyone is doing enough of that. We need to start changing the flow and changing this energy. I'm sure everyone out there can feel this right now. It feels not right. The, the, just the energy. The energy in the supermarket, the energy off of TV, the energy just in the world. It's up to us to change that. And that means that we have to be positive. We have to prepare properly. That means draw your own conclusions. Spread love, not war. You know that whole thing. We've heard this before. But guys, adversity is always followed by opportunity. You can have faith. You can have hope. We're good. We're good. And we're going to be a whole lot better if we start supporting one another, believing in one, one each other, believing in one another, and loving one another. It's, it's not hard. We can do this. But it's going to take togetherness and unity. So with that being said, I know it's a little bit of a rant, but hey, you know what? It's my podcast. I had a couple things on my heart just from different experiences that I'm having, but I remain hopeful. I remain faithful. I have faith that this is going to be one of the greatest things that the country needed. Why? Because the country needed a reset on how we, th what we thought was important. We are the important ones. Connection is the important thing. Love is the important thing. So let's just keep loving on one another, supporting one another, help people, and if anyone, you know what, reach out to me directly. If you can't go to the grocery store, I will find a way to get you food. Reach out and, 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 and let's collaborate. There's no way we can't do it together. So if you're struggling, reach out and let's see how we can help. Man, that was loud. That probably means someone's on the Zoom call that we're going to have, which we're doing every single day at 3.33. So uh, if you are... Uh, if, if you're in need of motivation, we do a live Zoom call every single day. The Zoom room is 303-033-0033. I made it really easy, and the time is 3.33, and we do it for about 33 minutes. So with that being said, this is the Final Percent Podcast with Greg Kimball. I appreciate the heck out of you. And you know what? Let's be positive and come to your own conclusions. 
Come to your own conclusions. Do your own research. But you don't need to sit on the news every single day in and day out. They are in the advertising business, not the news business. So you know what? Let's stay strong, stay compassionate, and we're going to get through this together. It's the final the final